Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In my last video, I talked about the top 5 masking tools to use in the new DxO Photo Lab 7. Do watch that video to get a better understanding of local masking with the DxO. In that video, I said the best masking tool to use was the control line, as it frees you from tedious brushing, the limitations of the erase tool, while giving precise masking control. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on local masking as I'll be sharing four tips to better using the control line for standout local adjustments. You'll probably not see any of these tips in any manual, but they're all super important if you want to get natural looking local adjustments and get the most out of DxO Photo Lab 7. So let's get right into it. The first tip is to target the foreground. Before we go into this tip, it's useful to note why using local adjustments are so critical when editing with DxO Photo Lab 7. As you can see here, using global adjustments produces subpar results. The adjustment reduces image quality by decreasing contrast and affecting too wide a range of tones. Not a great looking result. Let's go back to the first tip. As mentioned in my previous video, the control line mimics the operation of a physical graduated filter, which is primarily used to properly expose an overly bright sky. DxO's control line can certainly do that, as you can see here. But what beginners might not know is the control line can also be used in reverse. You can change the orientation not just to tone down the sky, but also to brighten an overly dark foreground. To do that, simply drag from the bottom of the image and use any of DxO's powerful brightening adjustments to get a properly exposed foreground. Here is another example. This time, let's not only brighten the foreground, but use the new HSL local adjustments to desaturate the grass. There. A perfect edit. Let's move on to the second tip. The second tip is to extend the control line. If you've used other graduated filter tools before, you might have learned that it's best to use a graduated filter when you have a clear dividing line between light and dark. But what about images like this where you have an irregular tall tree marring the horizon? Well, I'm happy to report you can still use a control line with such an image. If you have a tall structure, simply do the following. First, extend the control line to cover the tall structure. Second, point the eyedropper to an area where the color represents the foreground. The ability to move the eyedropper is what makes the control line so much better than standard graduated filters. As you can see here, the sky is now largely unaffected due to the pixel analysis performed by the control line, taking into account both brightness and color from the eyedropper's reference point. Here is another example. This time the trees extend throughout the height of the image. No problem, using the technique just described, a perfect mask can still be created. So that's extending the control line. Let's move on to the next tip. The third tip is to refine the mask. While the control line pretty much does the job most of the time, in cases where it fails, it's useful to note that you can refine the mask by using sliders. In this example, the mask is inadequate, not precisely covering the subject. No problem, I'll refine the mask by first moving the chroma slider to zero so that no color information is used in creating the mask and increasing the lumen slider to tell DxO to put more weight on the brightness information. As you can see, a more precise mask is the result. Here is another example of this process. The final tip is to use the negative control line. If you are new to DxO, you'll probably come across situations where you want to remove part of a mask 
and no amount of refinement will fix it. In this example, I want to select just the foreground. However, despite my best efforts, the mask is not very precise at all. The sky is still being affected by the adjustment. You could of course try to refine the mask as described previously, but another way is to simply add a type of control line called a negative control line to erase part of the mask. You create the negative control line by pressing the Alt key while dragging a control line as normal. If you look closely, there is a negative sign present to indicate that this is a negative control line. As you can see here, the sky is no longer as affected by the brightness adjustment, making for a better result. So there you have it, four tips to maximize local adjustments with the control line. In my opinion, it's the best masking tool in DxO Photo Lab 7. Hopefully this video will save you from hours of frustration. Let me know if you have any other tips on how to improve masking using the control line or any local adjustment tool with DxO. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.